citizens about the looming crisis in American education. So listen in as your hosts, Mark Schneider and George Roscoe Jr., unpack the issues and organizations affecting our children. And now here's your hosts, Mark Schneider and George Roscoe Jr. Hello, everyone. I'm George Roscoe. And I'm Mark Schneider. And we want to welcome you to today's episode 74 of Say What, where we talk about the threats to our children in the public school system including actually a new project that is fighting back against these threats. The project is called The Promise to America's Parent. Now, this is really exciting, George. Uh, POK recently was asked by one of our uh, key partners, an organization that most of our listeners will have heard about, Alliance Defending Freedom. This is probably the uh, biggest and, and most effective public interest law firm to represent uh, conservative and Christian and Judeo people that believe in the Judeo-Christian worldview right mm-hmm. rights in, in our culture. And um, they asked us um, to participate with them in this parents in this promise to America's parents. In fact, George, you were actually asked to speak at the kickoff event in Virginia this yes. year. Yes, and uh, unfortunately, I'm so bummed, but I had to be at our family reunion during the same time. A so man's got to have his priorities. <laughs> I couldn't be there. However, um, we wanted to introduce this project to parents because we thought it's very helpful um, and um, kind of to unpack it. And before we do, I wanted to just give some go back in time a little bit in history to see Um, how parental rights have been under attack in the United States. And coming from communist Romania, um, and I know that a lot of our listeners are immigrants that have come from former communist socialist nations, uh, they understand this. But this was one of the shockers for me um, to learn that back in 1963, in our congressional records, uh, this was documented Um, that the Communist Party goals um, in America included, here's number 41, the emphasize the need to raise children away from the negative influence of parents, Uh, attribute prejudices, mental blocks, and retarding of children to suppressive influence of parents. Parents, you have to realize this. Any Marxist ideology is out to get you. It is completely there to to attack you. And this is 1963. This is 60 plus years ago. The the framers of the Communist Party goals here in America, not in Russia, not in Romania. This is in America. They are out to get you. And that was just one of many goals of the Communist Party back then that were read into the congressional record for posterity to always have and know about. So it's not a secret. Correct. If you want to know what their objectives are, all you have to do is go there and you can find out. So parents, they don't like you. They uh, do not. They, they don't want to have anything to do with you. You're an impediment to the success of the Communist Party's goals. And there's another one, George, isn't there? Goal number 17. Yeah, and this one is to get control of the schools, use them as transmission belts for socialism and current communist propaganda, soften the curricula, get control of teachers' associations or unions, and put the party line in textbooks. That's a direct quote. Direct quote. That was not a paraphrase. He, nope. That was a direct quote. And for this to be accomplished, of course, George, the nuclear family has to be obliterated, right? Oh, yes. This has always been a goal um, of Marxism. And they have a goal for this as well. It, it's goal number 40. It, it, here's a quote. Discredit the family as an institution. Encourage promiscuity an easy divorce. Now, we're not making this up. We're not. We're not conspiracy theorists. We are reading directly from the congressional record, 1963. Uh, it's just incredible. Um, Marxist ideology has always viewed parents as a stumbling block to achieve its utopian goals. And that's that's what they are, a utopia. And parents are a stumbling block. You know, this reminds me, George, of Vladimir Lenin who um, during World War I, he was in exile in uh, Switzerland. Mm-hmm. And if uh, maybe our, some of our listeners will know this, but Germany was at war uh, w- with Russia. 
And Germany actually paid Vladimir Lenin millions of dollars in, in gold to go back to St. Petersburg and start corrupting Russian society, which he summarily did, and which led to the October Revolution, which Germany thought, well, this is going to be good for us, you know, because now they're preoccupied with their own revolution. But of course, it didn't go well for Germany, either in World War I or World War II. Two, it came back to bite them big time. Well, Lenin had this term for people that he had convinced, that Marxism had convinced to sow discord in society. And it's a term many people use today, but they don't know where it comes from. It's called useful idiots. And it's still happening today, George, in our society. Yeah. And so with this background, parents, it's very important for you to know that there is somebody out there, there are groups of people with this ideology that are at war with you. You might not think that you're at war, but they are at war with you. And so the promise to America's parents seeks to uh, revive in this understanding about this kind of war against parents. And it breaks it down into three very easy to remember things. So the acronym is the word ACT, A-C-T. And the first one stands stands for accountability. Uh, The C stands for choice. And T stands for transparency. So the purpose of this project and of our partnership with Alliance Defending Freedom is to bring and raise awareness to parents about accountability, choice, and transparency. So let's let's dive into each one of these things, Mark, so that our parents understand what what this is about. So for accountability, I'm going to quote what we mean by this. Every mother or father may hold the government accountable for infringing on their rights to care for their child. Now, Mark, last week we went through ed code by ed code by ed code of rights that we as parents have. Now, what one of those things that we discussed was this whole idea of confidential medical services and how it contradicts with a parent's rights uh, to uh, be notified about any kind of absenteeism of their child. Yeah. Um, so let me read for you the California Ed Code 46010.1, and here's what it states. Commencing in the fall of the 1986-87 academic year, the governing board of each school district shall, each academic year, notify pupils in grades 7 to 12 inclusive and the parents or guardians of all pupils enrolled in the district that school authorities may excuse any pupil from the school for the purpose of obtaining confidential medical services without the consent of the pupil's parent or guardian. Hence the need for accountability. Yes. Now, what what I didn't realize when I first discovered this ed code and what most parents haven't realized either that this ed code was around from 1986. Yeah, it goes back a long time. And people here are thinking that, wait up, you know, things have just gotten bad in California over the last five to 10 years. No, no, no. This has been going against you. Remember what we quoted up early on? It's a battle that for over 60 years and now 30 something years ago, it's actually making its way into the ed code. Now, who changes ed codes? Like, who has the time to say, you know what, let me petition the state legislator to change ed codes? There's only really one organization that does that and does it well. Jeez, I wonder who that is, George. That's the teachers' union. Teachers' union, yeah. And so remember one of the communist goals mm-hmm. about taking over teachers' associations because they will then focus on this kind of stuff. Um, so... The teachers' union uh, that is linked uh, hand-in-hand with Planned Parenthood and the ACLU, um, they regularly advise students about this ED code here, 46010.1. And it actually has resurfaced uh, mainly because of the California Healthy Youth Act. Um, And that ED code is very critical to it. Why? Because the Healthy Youth Act teaches children about abortion, teaches children about their mental health, and that leads to their gender incongruence or dysphoria that leads to, well, you can go and get mental health services, and under that 
guise of mental health services, it could lead to puberty blockers, uh, and it could lead to even sex change surgeries without parental knowledge or consent. If you look at these three organizations, George, it, it forms an unholy trinity. Teachers unions, Planned Parenthood, and ACLU, all working in, in harmony to push upon our public school system this radical agenda to, according to the communist agenda, which we read earlier, to strip the rights of parents, to, to take them away from their parents and to bring them more and more under the control of not only the public school system, but now off-campus health services. Yep. And so we as parents, under this you know, theme of accountability, uh, we need to understand these laws and know how to push back against them. And one more thing that I, I really want to notify parents about is because you might be going into your school boards and trying to um, you know, gain more of this accountability, but uh, usually on the other side, you will be met, at least in the Western states uh, that are under the Ninth Circuit Court, um, you'll you'll deal with this ruling called Fields versus Palmdale School District that was ruled in 2005, which says the following, quote, we hold that there is no freestanding fundamental rights of parents to control the upbringing of their children by introducing them to matters of and relating to sex in accordance with their personal and religious values and beliefs. Parents are possessed of no constitutional right to prevent the public schools from providing information on that subject to their students in any form or manner they select. And unfortunately, George, that's still controlling law, at least in the Ninth Circuit where this measure was ruled. And this, this is a law that the ACLU uses regularly to bludgeon school officials into conformance with this radical agenda. And so, yeah, so this is the law that makes my blood boil, and I hope one day that I can be responsible for repealing it. Um, second one, choice. Here's what we mean by choice. Every mother or father has the responsibility and right to choose the education and medical treatment that they deem best for their child. What a concept. Strange. California's one-party system further impedes on parental rights by not allowing school choice legislation. They claim that taxpaying parents do not have the right to choose which schools their money should go in order to fund their child's education. See, the government here in California and in most places is basically forcing students to remain in underperforming government schools. Yeah. Um, and so when it comes to choice... This is very important just in terms of general education choice. However, Mark, last time we also talked about this opt-out policy, and we, we made the distinction between opt-in and opt-out. And opt-out policies um, are, are not good because basically what it is is the school's going to do what they want to do, and unless you realize that you have to opt them out and write that paper and submit it, that's it. Your child's going to be exposed to all this harmful material. And they may not even tell you that you have the right to opt out. You may not even get a notice, or if you do get one, it may come in a postcard that looks like junk mail in your mailbox, and you never realize it until the damage is done. Exactly. So in California, you know, we have opt out rules, but prior to to these opt-out rules, we actually used to have opt-in policies we did. where the school had to actually take the effort to send that paper home. And if that paper never came back to the school, they were not allowed by law to teach your child whatever they wanted to, to teach them. So what was interesting for me, Mark, is that I've been you know reading um, CECUS um, the acronym S-I-E-C-U-S stands for the Sexuality, Information, and Education Council of the United States. Which is not a government organization, even though it sure sounds like one. Exactly. Now, they come out with their annual legislative report. And interestingly enough, they care about opt-in and opt-out oh, policies. they do. Always have. Every time a, a state passes an opt-out policy or an opt-in policy, they call it regressive. And they also say that it is a barrier to a child's right to education. 
I have to say this, George. I love the terminology that they that they use. This term "regressive" it reminds me of the uh, the democratic liberals' view of our tax code, our graduated tax code. So, if you're taxing people a greater percentage based on the the income that they make, that's rev- that's seen as progressive income tax policy. A flat tax where everybody's being taxed the same percentage is viewed as a regressive tax policy. They choose these terms very carefully, including opt-in policies are now being seen as regressive. So so parents, if you caught that, this regressive and a barrier to a child's right to education, the word barrier actually is applied to parents. You are being considered the barrier. Why? Because your signature is required on that opt-in form. And so if you don't sign, then you are being a barrier to your child's right to education. So choice. Choice is, is huge. Parents, we need to understand that we need the choices uh, that are you know in, in the favor of our children um, to, to take them to whatever educational institution we feel uh, that they should be going. So the last one here. So we talked about accountability, about choice. And here's another big one, T, transparency. Every mother or father has the right to know about what their child is learning, their child's health, and any harms to them. Once again, it seems so trivial, so common sense, but... It's not happening. It is not happening. Um, When we talk about transparency... Here's some of the things that that we've experienced, Mark, we with have. with parents in California. So when the Healthy Youth Act passed and we, we saw that this whole thing changed from an opt-in to an opt-out, uh, there was a mom that we were working with in Northern California who crafted legislation called SB 673. And we said, okay, you know what, state, if you're going after – the 7th through 12th graders and you're mandating comprehensive sexuality education and you're, you're mandating an opt-out form for them, we said, okay, we'll pick our and choose our battles. Let's look at the K through 6th, our most impressionable children, our most innocent. How can we protect them? Can parents have a greater say about them? Can we modify the Healthy Youth Act to say opt in policy for K through 6th, opt out policy for 7th through 12th. Well, guess what happened when we wanted that degree of transparency? The Parent Teacher Association, the PTA of California, was the first to come out in opposition to this piece of legislation. Unfortunately, George, this is what um, parents of children in the school system need to recognize, that these vaunted institutions that once were so friendly to parents and had the children's welfare um, always in mind, unfortunately, George, many of them, if not most of them, have been corrupted. And this is yet another example. Yep. And one thing that I learned from Rebecca Friedrichs is that in in the bylaws of the PTA, which they were modified back in the 80s or 90s, the Teachers Association, the Teachers Union, has pressured them, the CTA has pressured them so badly that now any form of legislation that occurs in the state of California and that the Teachers Union takes a position on, the PTA cannot take an opposite stance to it. They can remain silent. Yep. But they cannot take an opposite stance. So this is how how fake it's getting in California. Even the PTA, the organization that should be standing up for the interest of parents and for transparency to allow parents to do what is best for their children and to know what's happening um, in within their the curriculum, uh, they're basically saying nope. You don't have that privilege. So, George, in the few minutes we have left, what 
What's it going to take for parents to turn back the tide of what we read up front, these Marxist ideologies that are written into our congressional um, uh, record and to start taking back our schools? So parents, I hope you first recognize that this is war. This is war. And in fact, uh, when when I figured this out back in 2018, uh, a year later in 2019, there was an article published here in the Orange County Register. And I submitted just a short little uh, comment to the editor uh, about the California Healthy Youth Act that was the, the discussion of that article. And I said, AB 329 has lit the fire of a parental revolution. Sacramento should expect a backlash the likes of which it has never witnessed before. This means war. And I, along with thousands of other parents, will be fighting back. And they published that comment in the OC register. This is what it's going to take, parents. We need thousands upon thousands of parents to lift up their voices, to take action at the local level from their local school, local school district, to the county boards of education, to the state department of education. And we need to stand up and become part of this promise to America's parents. That's so well said, George. And POK is your partner in doing just that. Um, uh, please take the time to go and visit our website, protectourkidsnow.org, where we have a wealth of information to equip you to fight back against the woke ideology that is corrupting our entire school system. You can go and download um, and share the many brochures that we have that highlight the the problems that uh, we talk about on this program that actually go into a lot of detail. We have uh, some very professionally produced, excellent videos. Uh, These are uh, 10 minute each that that go into detail about uh, the threats facing our, our kids. We also have a brochure on how to start a private school. So if you're a, a, a church pastor and you've got extra space um, at your church that's going unused during the week, um, this will guide you step by step and actually how to start a school to save kids out of the public school system. But George, we're also available to speak to any group that wants to have us. If you like what you hear on on, on this program and you'd like uh, George or myself to uh, uh, speak on, on your behalf, we're happy to do it. You can just go to our website and find out how. And of course, George takes money um, and resources to fund the kind of effort that POK is putting forth. Yep. So if you like what you hear and you want to see more of it, uh, you can also donate to our organization. And our calendar is getting quite booked here over the next couple of months. It is indeed, which, um, which is a good thing. Yeah. So we really thank you, George. Thanks for t- taking the time to um, uh, to tell us about this very important partnership that we have with Alliance Defending Freedom. And uh, parents, please take the time to get involved, um, to, to make yourself better known about this initiative. You can go to ADF's website as well. And um, yeah. Well, parents, this is the time to stand We're in a war. You need to fight back. And so join POK and other like-minded organizations to help protect parents and our rights. Until next time. You've been listening to Say What? The radio ministry of Protect Our Kids, where they seek to inform and equip concerned citizens about the crisis in American public education and the forces working against our children. Join us at this same time every Saturday as attorney Mark Schneider and Pastor George Roscoe Jr. unpack the issues so that we can better safeguard our nation's children. For more information about this program or Protect Our Kids, email the show at info at protectourkidsnow.com. That's info at protectourkidsnow.org. And join Mark and George right here next week at this same time for another episode of Say What?